Hello everyone. Welcome back to Elevate in Spirit. This is another episode of Financial Stewardship. I started a series talking about prosperity, but specifically, we delve deep into the principles of managing our resources in alignment with God's Word. We've learned a lot from this book in the past few episodes. So stick around as we continue this enlightening discussion. Before we dive in, we also have a condensed 50-page booklet summarizing the main points. And here's the kicker. It's absolutely free. All we ask is for your support in spreading these transformative teachings. Now let's dive into it. Let's talk about wealth, a subject that often causes debate. Few people really think it's selfish, but let me clear that up. Being truly wealthy doesn't mean accumulating money for yourself. It means letting God's gifts flow through you. Still, some people, even religious people, are against this idea. It's like the story of Judas who said bad things about the woman who put precious oil on Jesus' feet. His actions were motivated by greed, not a worry for the poor. Let me share with what Jesus said in Matthew 6, verse 25 to 33. Jesus himself addressed this mindset in Matthew 6, verse 25. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? The verse serves as a reminder of the importance of trusting in God's provision and authority. Jesus shows how important it is to seek a deeper relationship with God and align your life with His purposes by telling His followers to put spiritual concerns ahead of material ones. Overall, the verse tells believers to trust that God will take care of their wants and to put their focus on seeking His kingdom above all else, knowing that He will provide for them in ways that go beyond just having money or things. Focusing on God's guidance and a promise to live in line with His will should replace worries about the world. And in Matthew 6, verse 26, Jesus says, Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? The first part of the verse tells us to pay attention to the birds in the sky. Birds, unlike humans, do not engage in the complicated tasks such as sowing or reaping or storing away food in barns for future use. God takes care of their needs even though they don't plan and prepare like humans do. This observation brings to light how easily God takes care of the natural world. There is a question in the second part of the verse. Are you not much more valuable than they? In this verse, Jesus is emphasizing how much more valuable and worthy people are than birds. How much more will God provide for His beloved children, who are of infinite worth in His eyes, if He takes care of the needs of birds, which are less important to Him? Overall, this verse tells believers to trust that God will provide for them and care for them. It does this by telling them of their high status as God's beloved creations. Instead of worrying about our material wants, it tells us to put our faith in our loving and reliable Heavenly Father to provide for us. And in Matthew 6, verse 27 to 30, Jesus says, Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? In the following passage, Jesus asks his followers to think again about how pointless it is to worry. He asks directly if worrying can make you live even one more hour, which shows that worrying about the future is useless. By putting it this way, Jesus gets his followers to think about how pointless worry is and how important it is to believe that God is in control. He then tells them to look at nature, especially the flowers in the field. He compares the hard work and stress of people to the natural beauty and supply that just happens. Even though the flowers don't work or spin cloth, they are decorated with beauty that is even more beautiful and rich than King Solomon. This example shows how much God cares for and provides for His world. And lastly, in Matthew 6, verse 31 to 33, Jesus says, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or, What shall we drink? Or, What shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. 
The verse compares this way of thinking to that of pagans, or people who don't believe in God, suggesting that lack of faith leads to these kinds of worries. This passage, on the other hand, gives believers hope that their Heavenly Father knows exactly what they need. It highlights the idea of divine guidance, which means that God loves His children and makes sure they have everything they need. It is powerful and comforting to think of God as a loving Father who knows and meets the wants of His children. The most important thing this verse says is to seek God's kingdom and His justice above all else. This means making sure that your thoughts, desires, and actions are in line with God's plans and values. Believers are told that all their wants will be met if they put the kingdom of God first and live in righteousness. This promise shows that God is trustworthy and will provide for His people as long as they put His kingdom first. In general, this verse tells believers to stop worrying about their material wants and instead focus on growing closer to God and helping Him with His work in the world. If you think about building God's kingdom first, then you should think about other people's needs instead of your own. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, Jesus says, Anyone who does not provide for their relatives, and especially for their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. The verse makes a strong statement about how important it is to perform this role. It indicates to say that not taking care of your family is the same as denying the beliefs you say you follow. In other words, it means that not doing this task goes against the person's religious beliefs and teachings, which makes their faith insincere and untrue. Using this scenario to show how bad it is to not take care of your family shows that even people who don't believe in God can still understand and take care of their responsibilities to their loved ones. Therefore, someone who says they are religious but doesn't care about their family shows a deeper lack of moral and ethical values than someone who doesn't believe in any religion. Let me share a glimpse of my own journey. Despite seasons of extreme poverty, my commitment to prioritizing God's kingdom never wavered. And you know what? God's provision has been nothing short of miraculous. It's a principle of sowing and reaping. Just like a seed planted in the ground, financial seeds require time to grow and yield a harvest. Trusting in God's faithfulness is key. It's a lifestyle, not a one-time transaction. So, my friends, I challenge you to adopt a mindset of abundance rooted in God's promises. Start by putting God's kingdom first in your finances and watch as He extravagantly takes care of you. Thank you for joining me today. Remember God's blessings are not for selfish gain, but for becoming channels of His love and provision. Happy to have you on this episode of Financial Stewardship. If you found this video inspiring, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more topic like this. See you in the next episodes. God bless you. From Elevate in Spirit.